Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. See, no overreaction. <laughs> that was beautiful, then. That was, that was, that's how it should be. Uh, just in case any of you are wondering why I'm a big, static, horrible mess, it's because I am, I have actually morphed into a big, static, horrible mess. That is, uh, it's my new job. You sure it's true there. form, finally? Yes, finally. Turned into a, a cheap Star Trek special effect. Indeed. Uh, no, my, my webcam has been playing up for weeks, and uh, I decided to, to send it back to Logitech uh, with with one, some of my own feces uh, in order for them to hopefully replace it or give me a new one or give me some, some money back, etc. I don't know yet. We'll see. You know what these returns are like. So I am camless, so we are where we are. Um, for those of you who are, who are new to the show, we are Residence Arcade. We are four blokes, or three today, from the UK, from the north of the UK, and we talk about games, game development and gaming news. To that ilk, as you can see, we've got Steve and Sam with us today. Hi. And uh, no Lou, thank God. He's, he says that he's got a, a bad throat, but he blatantly hasn't got a bad bad throat, and he's he's just given us excuses for spending time with his new girlfriend, and he doesn't he doesn't want us to take the piss out of him too much, but we're going to anyway, so who cares? Especially when he's not here. Especially when he's not here. He's not here to defend himself. Uh, hello to to everybody who's coming into the channel. Uh, hi, Mythalaw, and nobody else actually, just Mythalaw at the moment. But hello. Um, so let's let's move on straight on to games we've played. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've played I've played quite a bit this week. Um, a, a few new games for me, anyway. I know that they're fairly old. Um, I, I, I'll start. I, st I started playing last week a game called Unepic. Um, I actually started playing it Wednesday last week. Played maybe about an hour before the show, and I uh, uh, kind of gave you my opinion on it. I've been quite addicted to it since then. Quite enjoying it. It's uh, it's a cool little like two D RPG platformer, and uh, it's it's. It just got. I said it's got general RPG prog RPG progression in it. So you build up your charisma, you build up your health, your constitution, and everything else. And you go around collecting items, you kill bosses, and you kind of move through the game. It's. I don't think it's anything special in particular, but I'm quite enjoying playing it. I'm enjoying the experience of of getting from A to B. And uh, I said the voice acting. It is. It's basically all based around poop jokes and sex. But it's still entertaining, so I'm, I'm enjoying it. There was one moment where I was thinking, oh, I'm starting to repeat myself here a little bit. I'm starting to go around in circles. Um, but I've kind of got over that now, so quite enjoying it. And uh, your question last week, Steve, about the about is it worth a tenner, I would say definitely. I think you could probably get it cheaper as well somewhere, some places. Um, secondly, I was being I've been playing a bit of Kerbal Space Program as well. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, Kerbal Space Program. Um, have you heard of this, Sam? No, I haven't. I was going to ask you about it. Um, Steve's played it, haven't you? Yeah, I played it quite a lot. You played it ages ago, didn't you? When you got it early access. Yeah, got early access. It's a sp space launch slash build simulator with supposedly real Newtonian physics. Yeah. Um, it's not just a space launch simulator anymore. It's got you can you can set orbits and yeah, you, well that's what I meant by launches in you oh, know right. you're, you're creating and launching craft into space you can dock with uh, asteroids you can land on the moon you can send rovers out yeah all that you've got to build yourself from modular components yeah I, I started I can I got it after it was released out of uh, early access because I mean I was I've, I've always had my eye on it and it's been dead cheap in places as well it's like three quid four quid or whatever and uh, yeah. I, I've avoided it because I've been like it's to me, I, I didn't didn't feel like I was that interested in it, but I just really fancied playing it this weekend, so I grabbed it and uh, I quite enjoying it. Got a bit addicted again. Played a few days completely like glued to the screen, trying desperately to get my horrifically shitty like spacecraft out of the off the launch pad into space. I think I managed to hit about seventy thousand meters, which is the 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 time that you the. the height that you go into space or into orbit. I think you can actually yeah. orbit from twenty thousand meters, can't you? Apparently, something like that. Uh, anyway, if you, I, th I think if you want to go into a true orbit, you've got to be over a hundred thousand. 
Well, I, well anyway, when, when I was at 70,000, I managed to get into an orbit, but I didn't really understand what I was doing because it's the first time I hit orbit and I didn't do the um, the tutorial on it. So I, <laughs> I kind of, I just ended up like floating sideways around the planet. Not really, I didn't go into the map view and set up my, what was it, Apo, Apo Sis and yeah. Popple Sis or whatever. Basically, the, there was no tutorial when it was released early access, so it was kind of a figure it out for yourself. But the basic principle is you launch straight up. When you get to about uh, 70,000 metres, you go on a 45 degree angle, wait until you get to about 150,000 metres. When you get there, you can you can set your craft to face the... Uh, a a, a papocysis, uh, something like yeah. that. And you've got um, like prograde and retrograde acceleration. So you prograde accelerate and that basically increases the size of your, your trajectory arc until it goes around the planet. Hmm. And that but, creates an orbit. Then once you've got that, you can go around the other side, increase it further, then increase it further until you've got your orbit where you want it. And, and at that point, you can increase it so far that you intercept the moon or other planets. Or yeah, I, I just got to that point where I was uh, trying to intercept the moon, which is M-U-N. It's, it's, yeah, it's a moon. But I, uh, I, I said I'm, I'm quite enjoying it. I think I'll play it a little bit more, but I don't know how much more I'll get out of it. There's some crazy ass uh, vehicles that people have made online and some of the um, space planes they're incredibly difficult to build right but you, you see some of the ones that people have built and they're quite uh, quite breathtaking shall we say I've, I've been playing with some of the prefabs in sandbox mode because you can load some uh, yeah. that are built into the game and uh, yeah that they look the pretty good the access either. sorry you, you've got it easy well I, I, I probably have this is probably why I didn't want to faff around with it too much before it's like it's like um when i first played minecraft it was it wasn't there wasn't such a thing as early access then but i first played it and it was like what the hell is going on there's no tutorial what the, i'm not enjoying this and i haven't played it since i didn't really want to be in that situation i wanted to be right there's actually something to do here now and i know i know where to go and how to to get it i actually went into career mode first off and there's not much in career mode that helps you either no um and everything's locked and you've you've only got very basic components you've basically got a got to earn yeah. science points by going into war but then going into war but with some of these scientific instruments yep um getting it for certain heights then you unlock other comes yeah and i said i've 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 played it i've played the career mode a little bit but i got a little bit bored of trying to figure out how to get more science points and i was making plenty of money for some reason i, was, I could yeah. make, i could make lots and lots of money but i couldn't i couldn't figure out how to get science properly uh, occasionally i'd get point one of a science point and i'd be like right just spent an hour building this craft got it into space and nothing happened yeah so. like in the uh in the scientific instrument section of uh of your build menu you'll have little antennas and capsules yeah. full of like strange goo and when you launch up you've got to expose that go to different altitudes and pressures and heats. Oh, right. You learn signs from that. So and where you does it tell signs. you that? Um, well, I, I don't know because I, I've, I've never played it with a tutorial. When I played it, it was just jumping in. You, you used to have it though, weren't you? So you can play the full oh, yeah, game yeah. now probably. Yeah, I but I've, I've played hours and hours and hours on it. So it's kind of, it's, it's something that I will go back to eventually. <laughs> but I'm in no rush to at the minute. We all say that. We all say that. It's like Prison Architects, like now when it releases. I have went back to that a couple of times, actually. I have a few times, but I played about 10 minutes and then thought, oh, I've done all this before. Oh, there's a new, oh, right. Oh, it's it's a new dog that they've introduced or guards or, or guns or they fixed a few bugs that were annoying me before, but I'm still playing the same game fundamentally and I've played it to death, mm. you know. Anyway, I... I I'm quite. You know, I see what the hype is about. It's very, very. I say. I think it's a, a good, accurate kind of space geek sim. Um, yeah. And I can definitely see why people rave about it. I'm, I'll, I shall continue playing it occasionally and see how I go. And I like it all the more because Lou was convinced it was never actually going to come out. <laughs> yeah. Was it was was it released this week or last week or last week? That's last week. So I rubbed his face right in it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so my next game that I've been playing, GTA Five, finally got hold of it. I said I wasn't so sure I was going to grab it last week, and uh, I've all I've done so far is because I've because I've recently got a new graphics card, uh, and I've also this week bought a brand new gaming laptop. So I've got a I've got a, a gaming laptop that's got more VRAM than my desktop. I've got I've got a, a GTX six uh, sorry GTX nine eighty in both, 
I've got a 980 mobile in the in the laptop with 8 gig of VRAM. You can't get 8 gig of VRAM on desktops, and I don't understand why that is. I, <laughs> I've never come across it before. It's probably not needed on desktops. Why, why would it be needed on laptops? I've got 16 gig of RAM on it as well. Yeah, I appreciate that it's probably the same model card, but the architecture of the card yeah. won't be the same. No, it's not, obviously. I mean, it's It'll not be as a powerful. much, much, much cut down version. So, in order to alleviate some of the performance issues, to probably uh, just give it more memory. No, VRAM's used for textures and texture size, and yeah, um, yeah. that's it. So, really, because though. the pipeline uh, architecture won't be as quick, it can't load them and stream at the same time, mm -hmm. so it gives it more memory, so it can buffer them all. It, it gives the illusion of better performance. Yeah. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not an expert when it comes to the hardware side of things. I, but... Uh, but <laughs> so I've um, so I've been I bought GTA Five and I've been playing it and uh, I quite like the first person. I quite I quite in, I still prefer playing the uh, in the vehicles in third person with a pad. Yeah, definitely. But I like the first person um, human control stuff. What are you distracted with, Steve? Well, um, no, sorry. <laughs> it's just spent the last half an hour staring at different screens and yeah, I'm I'm still talking. I'm still involved in the conversation. I've said more than Sam has. You have, you have, but yeah. we are talking about PC stuff. So Sam's played Grand Theft Auto Five. Oh, yeah. that him talk about it a bit first before I jump in with questions. <laughs> before you jump in and say he's wrong about everything. Yeah, um, but I said I, I, I basically so far it does look very pretty, very pretty. One. One gripe I've got, obviously I've got a gripe with be, being a PC gamer. Um, I, as soon as I took a screenshot, right, I've got it installed in Steam. As soon as I took a screenshot, it crashed. <laughs> I, I, I can't take screenshots in it, which is a bit annoying. It's not a deal breaker, though, is it? You don't have to take screenshots. No, it's not, but I, wa I wanted a few for the stream. I wanted to put a few up on the uh, yeah. on the pre and post show stuff. But I wanted to is, ask you. It is a very. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sam. Well, have you have you got it on PC as well, Steve? Now you've all got it. Yeah. Have you been playing it online much, either of you? Have you just have you dabbled in that? Not at all yet. Not yet, but I want to. That's all I wanted to know. If you've tried it out, I'd like to know what the PC online community is like because I imagine it's be very different to the console one in I'm, a lot of ways. I'm assuming you've played it on the console online because I did try. But I, I, got, yeah. I think I tried it before it was actually properly released, or it was it was broken or buggy. And uh, I got into the game. It took twenty or thirty minutes for me to get into the bloody game because I had to that all the loading screens, and then you had the intro, and then you had to do one or two missions before you actually got into the the multiplayer aspect of it, or something like that. I can't remember. And then it crashed, and I thought well, I'm I not fucking can... doing that again. I'm pretty sure you can access the multiplayer straight away. When you're doing the character select thing, you can do it from the not. I think you have to do the intro mission first, maybe. But you, once you get into the San Andreas part of the game, you just go down on your phone and select the fourth character, and that starts the multiplayer. Oh well. You can also select it from the balls menu as well. That, that didn't work when I was playing it initially. It might have been that it it what either it had just launched and there was loads of bugs in it, or it was slightly different or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, it didn't work. It took me ages to set my character up and everything else I needed to do. And then it crashed and I'd lost my character and I'm like, oh, fuck this shit. Just fuck off. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I was a bit miffed. Um, but um, it is undoubtedly a very, very pretty game. It is. Especially, well, consider, was it 2013, 2012 it came out? 2013. Yeah, but it's, it, it, it's been pretty much rebuilt uh, from the bottom up since then. But yeah, um, well, at least the, the assets have anyway. The the game itself. Yeah. I mean, I really like the the first person aspect in terms of you can, if you look down, you can see your body and it reacts to you know where you're looking and how. You, if you're looking in a mirror and you move your your the mouse left and right, his head moves. Although I have seen his his chin go through his uh, shoulder once or twice while he's been doing that. Only only a very minor thing that, but. Yeah, but that happens to, to all of us at some time. Yeah, oh, my chin quite often goes through my chest. Plus, I've not, I've never encountered a game where character clipping is not ever happen. It happens to even the best games having some sort of clipping problem with a, a gun or a weapon that you're using clips through some part of the character's costume or their leg or something. It yeah, always yeah. happens. I'm just being a twat with that. It's all right. I'm. <laughs> you expected perfection. I am expecting perfection. It's been what three, you know, two years since it came out. Should be perfect. It cost all that money to make, as we were talking about last week. Yeah. But um, first impression's great. All I've done is, though, I've done the, the first Michael mission, obviously, the, you know, the one where it 
the tutorial mission, and then I've uh, yeah. I've taken charge of Franklin, got to Franklin's house, and then I basically had to do something else. I had to go and do some real life stuff, so I saved it there. So I haven't played much of it yet. Unlike some of my friends on Steam, honestly, GTA. Blah blah is playing GTA Five every five seconds. Everybody Everyone's on my Steam playing. list is playing. I, I don't. I haven't got a single game where more of my friends have got it, apart from maybe Skyrim. I think Skyrim is probably the only exception there. And uh, th there's one of my friends. Uh, you, you know him as well, Steve Biggs, who's who's played yeah. 130 hours of it already. What? 130 hours. <laughs> How long's it been out for? About. A a week and a half or honestly he, every five seconds I don't, he, he, he can't have a job or something he can't be working or something at the he, moment he must, have, he must have taken time off for the release yeah. <laughs> 130 hours is ridiculous that is pretty that extreme. Is crazy but i mean i've played that much on you know more than that on skyrim but, yeah, but over that, months yeah that. yeah months and months and i played that pretty addictively as well but but yeah i'm um so steve this weekend do you do you want to do you want to have a go of it yeah, Sunday is uh, probably best for me, mate. On the evening. Cool. Yeah, I'll 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 be doing some of that. It's not cross compatible, is it? We can't we couldn't get Sam involved, right? No, no I'm pretty sure it isn't. Which is a shame because I, 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 I if I could think of anybody to play GTA online with it, probably be you guys. I reckon you could form a little crew. Yeah. Get in a four person car and cause some chaos. It could be really good fun. Just have a laugh. That's all. It, that's all I want to do in it, really. Yeah. Not to. Uh, to get back on the old uh, the old PC master race bandwagon, but it just being unfair match well we wouldn't be against each yeah. other we'd be doing heists and stuff wouldn't we no, but in general yeah. i think he means yeah so we'd be getting headshots all the time and so well, i'd be going for like torso shots there is that as well with the first person thing as well because first person you can be very accurate with it whereas the third person stuff it's it's more of a just select a target and shoot isn't it mm. i don't know I'd, um i've but, been playing a mix of first and third and I've, it's it's headshots on both of them yeah, the pistols I mean, from miles away. It was always pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've never had a problem in, in any of the GTA games shooting somebody. I think uh, GTA Three, the the aiming was a bit shoddy, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But that's age. I mean, that's fucking years ago now, isn't it? So we were just happy it was in three D back then. Yeah, but it had. I mean, to be fair, they were they were always. I think we've had this discussion before when the games came out. The the gun playing Grand Theft Auto has always been one of the weaker bits. It was more about the open world and the driving and the vehicles, really. The gunplay and the aiming has never been that great. It was quite good in 4, and it's better in 5. I think they've they've got it pretty down in 5 now. It's like um, playing mm. Red Dead Redemption. I think they learned a lot playing uh, putting that together because that was... Um, the gunplay and that was quite primary to the gameplay. And, uh, they've, you know, obviously they've, they've yeah, improved it. And... It, was, it was different in that as well because of the they made a point of the guns being slow in that game so i find you're not really using a machine gun or, or whatever you're using like pistols and rifles and stuff so it's a bit slower and punchier wasn't it more yeah. the shots counted more in that game i think yeah, yeah. definitely uh, so yeah apart from gta 5 i've been playing dungeon keeper still and uh, i did play a, a little um no actually this week i haven't played any more um last of us but i'm still on that i'm still getting through that slowly so you guys, you played anything at all? Um, I got, uh, I, f I forget which game I bought, um, but I got a f like a random free Steam key with it. And I'm looking through my library now because I'll spot it when I see it. Um, but it was like a game I'd never heard of before. Le Legendary. Legendary. Oh no, I'm thinking of something else. Endless Legend. Yeah. No. No, no, it's, uh, this is a first-person shooter. Uh, it's, uh, it, it got a Metacritic review of 50. Right. Released in 2008. Um, basically, it's a first-person shooter where you're some type of jewel thief and you get commissioned to steal Pandora's box and you open it because you're a bit of a cunt. <laughs> um, and then all the evils of the world spew out and big monsters and griffins and stuff eh, it's pretty poor right so that's why you got 50 then i was gonna it's, say did you check out the score before you bought it or did you start playing it and thinking this it, is a bit crap 
What the reviews it was a random free oh. Steam key, that, so I just kind of I thought I'll give it a go because there has been some games that I've liked that have got quite low Metacritic reviews. Same here, to be fair. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you know it's all down to personal preference of the day, but yeah, I I agree with the majority on this. Oh, it's well. just a lot of the same thing happening all the time, like Griffins, a million Griffins for like half an hour, and then it's like werewolves. Ooh, ten thousand werewolves. That sounds like an yeah, MMO. Yeah. I had a similar experience with a game I played a while ago, and I think I'd... I don't know if I talked about it. I don't know if we'd started doing this podcast when I was playing it, a game called Dragon's Dogma, um, no. Dark Arisen, which was it's like an uh, uh, open-world um, action RPG-type game. I think from Capcom or something. It was, it was like Capcom, and you're like, eh, when have they ever made a game like this? And it was quite cool. It had some pretty cool combat mechanics. You could pick different types of fighter and all this kind of stuff but yeah you, you at the start of the game you kept encountering um, chimeras if you were at a certain level you go through the woods and you just get attacked by chimeras obviously it's a now what is it it's a lion's head snake's tail it's also got a goat's head on its back that's a chimera and then once you got past it's, a certain point in the game you get attacked by um oh god what's the one it's it's the one that's a cross between it might be is a griffin the one that's a cross between a, a lion and an eagle yeah yeah it's, yeah, then you get attacked by griffins, so it was kind of like, yeah, you've got these cool beasts, but why am I only ever getting attacked by one of them at a time? Like, it yeah. it, after it was a certain level, I got attacked by the other one, which felt a little dull to me. It's a shame, though, because that game had some really cool stuff in it, but, yeah. Yeah, this game hasn't really got many redeeming features, and I think uh, I've played it for, like, I don't know, 40 minutes. You played it that long? <laughs> I, I wouldn't have given it that long by the sounds of it. Well... You've got to watch the intro and shit like that, haven't you? <laughs> that's, that's like 15 minutes at least. And it crossed yeah, three easily. times. <laughs> and then you configure your keys. You know, yeah. that, that's all game time as far as Steam's concerned. Yeah, it is, yeah. So, you wouldn't recommend them, no? No. Five out of ten. Not even for free. Not even, I, I was <laughs> like that about that caster that I played a few weeks ago that what, what Potato Power sent me. He's, he sent me another one as well, like the same week, and uh, I can't. No, the week after, I can't remember what it is now. I haven't played it yet. But one thing I've learned from this whole experience is be wary of free CD keys. Be wary. Yeah, because they're going to be shit. Well, don't, yeah. What, what, where did you get it from? Did it just? No, it was. I, I bought a game and I got a random free Steam key. <sighs> ah, right. Sorry. I'm sure, I said this twice already. You were what game did you he buy? Did, he did say it. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think it was the Just Cause collection. All right, cool. Oh, have you, are uh, you a fan of them? Uh, no, but uh, a, a friend at work has been banging on about Just Cause 2 for ages, and mm. this collection was like £3, so I thought I'd it. I've got two in the um, in the cellophane still downstairs. I, I bought one, and I played it, and I enjoyed it, but it was a bit buggy, and it wasn't great. Yeah. You, know, you know, it was like a open-world Far Cry slash GTA-type game. Two. Well, that's gone. Yeah, well, that's how he explained it to me. Um, t one not being very good, but two, he said. Uh, apparently, I'm just getting this thing up now to make sure I'm getting this right. But he said that the actual playable area is like 400 square miles. Well, the which first dwarfs one, the, the first any one. other open player, uh, any other free free roaming adventure game. Yeah, but is it interesting? 400 square miles, or? <laughs> well, you I don't know, but it was like three quid. The first game I re I did enjoy. I did enjoy it. I'm not saying I, I won't say I didn't, but I did feel a little bit. It was a little bit like when I played Mercenaries, uh, Mercenaries Two. That it just mm. felt a little bit lackluster. And then the second one, I got it because I enjoyed the first one to an extent. It's got really some really cool mechanics in it. You know, like you can yeah, skyhook uh, on helicopters and you yeah, can paraglide off, uh, off the back of any vehicle. That yeah, attracted me. Like it's it's one of these games where the physics seems very open to abuse. Like, apparently, if you fall from a helicopter and hit the ground, you die. Mm. But if you fall from a helicopter, then fire your rappel gun at the floor, pulling yourself to accelerate, you don't die. Uh, they, <laughs> may, they may have fixed that in some of the later games. So that, apparently, that's still active because oh, he right. was only playing it the night. Well, the, again, if, if that's fun and, and the fans yeah. have enjoyed that, it's like it's like taking bunny hopping out of Quake 2, going yeah. back to that old sim simple. It's like, mm. you don't do it, do you? You don't piss. They did that, actually, didn't they, in, in a patch for Quake 2, I remember. They took yeah. the bunny hopping out like for 
two point one three or something like that, or one point one three, and uh, and uh, everyone yeah. just went yeah. up in arms. It's like I'm not they playing Quake anymore. Give everybody it. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I've got two. I keep meaning to play it. I haven't yet. And three is either out or coming out soon. I think uh, just cause. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah third one is on its way. <clears throat> I think it's this year. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'll, I still need to play two before I, I'd even consider getting three. <laughs> I can't be honest with you. So you get on that. Yeah. There's, uh, Although, there's... I'm strongly considering jumping straight into The Witcher Three because that's coming out on PS4 and it looks really cool. I am with you there. I'm going to ignore one and two. I think. And I'm just going to get on three. I've got three already. I've got a free, a free. Um, uh, I've got a free download. In fact, oh. Steve, have you got Witcher three yet? No, it's not out yet. I'm go- I should be getting a second free key because I'm on a new laptop, um, and I'll, oh. you can have it. Um, Cheers, dude. As, as long as I can, as long as I can transfer oh, it, yeah, I, if yeah. I get it, because I actually this is one of the new store stories later on. If you buy a GTX nine X, a nine seventy nine eighty or whatever, at the moment yeah. you get a free Steam key. Um, no, sorry, you get a free GOG mm. key for uh, The Witcher 3, and you all, at the moment, they've just released it as of the 5th of May, you get Batman Arkham Knight for free as well. Steve doesn't want that, the required specs are too high. No, it, it doesn't. It, I, 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 I don't want to play that game. Um, the, the 8K <laughs> textures, that's why it's so, it's so high spec. 8K textures, you don't get that in games, 8K textures. It's 4K yep. usually at the most. Why do yeah, you need it, 8K textures unless you've got a 10K monitor? Because four K, because four K monitors are because out having big. Some of that's shut up. You don't know eight anything. Eight times the resolution of your actual <clears throat> monitor isn't good enough. Because it gives you better, it gives you better tessellation. It gives you better uh, normals. It makes it look nicer in general. So shut up. Yeah. So there's an reserve, idea there to have it like two X or four X, but eight X. I'd reserve judgment until the game is fully playable and released. That's but, what I'm going to say about it. I, I think it's going to look beautiful, I've, I've, and I'm more than willing to... Well, I've, I've got more than the recommended specs anyway, so I don't care. And I've I'm, got I'm the first... Recommended specs, bro. But the, the pisser is here, is that I bought I bought my GTX 980 a couple of weeks ago. Only The Witcher 3 was available on this, this NVIDIA deal um, back then. Now, I bought my laptop on the 30th of April... And I didn't get it until the 6th of May, um, the 5th of May. And the 5th of May, they announced this, uh, this the Batman Arkham Knights free with any 980 purchase. So I've sent an email to my vendor. I've sent an email to Scan asking them if I'm eligible. I'm hoping I can yeah. wangle it. Because I spend a lot of money with Scan, to be fair. And I'm sure other people do as well, but you never know. Might, they might, you can they always might just drop me a key. You don't just now. send it back and reorder it. And be like, oh, I actually want it in a, can I get a different color one. I spent, I've spent a day uninstalling and reinstalling Windows Eight about fifteen billion times. So no, I'd rather buy Arkham Knight. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you. But if I'm if I'm eligible for it, I'm definitely going to you know try and get hold of it because I was I was like a day out from receiving the laptop and I I ordered it just before the bank holiday and then I got it just after the bank holiday so i got it yesterday so yesterday was when the thing because i could have just ordered it yesterday and got it today for fuck's sake you know it's an yep. annoying thing and I, I would have had arkham knight but then again on the scan website at the moment it only lists the witcher 3 so they either haven't updated things or that particular laptop isn't eligible for the arkham knight thing i don't know so i've dropped an email to find out. yeah i've dropped some email oh, i've dropped two emails actually <laughs> so i'm gonna, hopefully gonna get some feedback on that soon yeah, I'm up for The Witcher 3, though, especially when Steve said you could just jump in and not have to play 1 and 2, because mm. they're not available on the PlayStation. I don't, I don't know The Witcher 2 might be, but 1 definitely isn't, so I'll just jump into the third one. I remember reading that. about Witcher 2 in the PlayStation magazine. Um, okay. I'm pretty sure it's out on, on the PlayStation 3, possibly. Yeah, pretty sure okay. It is. But, um, yeah, I mean, I played 1, and I just... I can't get along with it. It just feels so, so far behind current games. You know, it's, it feels it doesn't feel like it flows very well. When was it RPG. released? The first one? Don't know. It could be um, just a case of you're playing it after the fact, and it's too old now. It's dated, perhaps. I don't know. Probably. I think the enhanced edition uh, was two thousand and eight. I'm not sure about the original. Yeah, I've got the enhanced a while edition. ago now. That's. It's a fair while ago in computer game terms. And, I know yeah. what Chris means, though. It's it's not so much the graphics, it's just the mechanics of things like the combat. It's mm. it's quite clunky and some of that you'd expect probably, you know, on, on 
quite an early PC game. I don't really like the upgrade system in it either, and I don't like the um, uh, like that. The side quests all feel a bit shoehorned in. I, I like the sound of the the fact that that the Witcher three sky, um, side quests are all supposed to be. They're all supposed to adjust the main line, the main storyline as well. It is that yeah. that I heard it about. I think I'm pretty sure it's about that. And uh, and, and that, that appeals to me. That appeal that that sounds different from other RPGs as well. Because quite often you'd have multiple side quest storylines going on, and you'd have your main quest. The multiple side quests may kind of meld into each other. I mean, I'm thinking about the Mass Effects, you know, they kind of <coughs> all affect relationships with uh, people in your group, but they don't affect the main storyline really. I think they might have slight influence, some of them, but it doesn't. By the sounds of it, The Witcher Three, they put a lot of effort into that. I yeah, like I mean, the the appeal uh, for a lot of people for the original Witcher game, and even these days, is the story. And mm. uh, the Witcher has got a big story behind it, a big like a big fan base because of the universe. And the game is only a very, very, very small part of that. Mm. Is it? Got, uh, is it like a Dungeons and Dragon, Dragons type game? Is is the Witcher like a Dungeons and Dragons type game as well? Does it? Oh, I, that, that's just a guess. Sorry. No, no. What do you mean by that? Well, I thought you might. I uh, thought there might be like roll dice rolling. No, oh, no, no. It's it's a book, and, and a, a lot of it kind of uh, is based on old Polish folklore and stuff. Um, yeah. but the books are really good. Um, Andrzej Sapkowski wrote them. Isn't it? It's, it was an indie game, the first one. Or it was an indie studio, the first game that released it's, it. Um, it was. Bioware? Really? No, no, it wasn't Bioware. Developer uh, CD Projekt Red. Yeah. The publisher was so, Bioware. No, so publisher Atari. Project with a J. Project. With a K. With a K. Well. Project. I was going to say, bad with a J. How else would you spell project? All right, sure, but it was the K that put me off. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so no other games, guys. Nothing else you played. No, just more Bloodborne, but not that much of it. All right then. So, shall we? Shall we do a list section this week? Yeah. No. Have yeah. Any, yeah. Have, has anyone got any ideas for a list? I've got. I've got one. It's last <laughs> week's idea, but it's pretty shit. But we can go with it. Uh, go on then. Have you? Have you, you sound like you might have some at Sam. No, I don't. I was trying to think of something, but nothing came to my head. All right. My. My li my list is favorite or worst or whatever animals in games. Ah, okay. Interesting one. It depends what you mean by an animal because there's animals as in like there's anthropomorphic animals. Of course, you can put your like you saw the hedgehogs in there and all that kind of stuff. I tell you what, I I actually haven't explained to the those people who may be watching what this is. So this is our way of the exploding list section. Um, Treated a Luthi. No, 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 I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we all hate Lou. We don't even know why we have him on this show. <laughs> what was that? That was the explosion, by the way. Oh right, right. Oh, right, nice. right. Yeah, so the, the way of the exploding list is just a quick list section for this uh, for for Resonance Arcade, and we just we we spring a, a list idea on on the crew. Someone in the audience sometimes does it, and then we just talk about it for. Five minutes, ten minutes, or whatever. So, animals, anthropomorphic. I'm fine with that. If you want to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog, that's fine. He's a hedgehog. He is. He's the got dog. attitude. He can really move. He's the fastest thing alive. As the song goes. Is he really your favourite? <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying he's just one of the ones that you could start um, talking about. There's lots of different because there's also like just animal animals, aren't there? Like uh, Epona and stuff. There's a there's one animal that, that always makes me laugh um, and it's from an old Mega Drive game which I believe used to be an arcade game before that uh, called the Two Crude Dudes um, uh. it was basically you were two huge muscular guys wearing like denim vests who <laughs> went round um, I've heard of them beating people Hunting up in dudes. order to uh, yeah it was kind of like a Streets of Rage but sideways scrolling and you had to get up to the tower and kill the bad boss hmm. Um but there were German Shepherd dogs in it, and the way the German Shepherd dogs when it would do is they'd come and attack you, they'd just bite your nipple, <laughs> constantly grind, and you'd be like, ah, 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 ah! <laughs> this thing's ripping your nipple off. Nice. Sounds well, like an experience. On, on that ilk, I actually thought you were going to talk about the um, uh, the sharks from the shark gun 
in oh uh, armed and dangerous armed and dangerous which is now my favorite game ever i've never played it i love the fact that there's a shark gun in it that you can you fire sharks at people <laughs> Just, yeah. It's amazing. Um, I, the, the number one animal that always pops it into my head is the dog in Fable, whenever I think about animals. I was going to say, one of the animals that's just a pure animal is uh, the horse I grow from Shadow of the Colossus. Because oh, of the right, way it yeah. controls, and also, massive spoiler alert for the end of that game. Um, there's a bit right when you go up to the last Colossi, last Colossus, whatever, and uh, you jump over this gap, and the horse bucks you off the horse. And then the horse falls into a ravine and you think it's dead. And it's really sad because this horse is like your only companion you've had this whole game. And it's just gone and it's just, oh, now I've got to fight the last Colossus. Cheers. And you're just going, you're really depressed. <laughs> it's really, it's really it's good. You're already pretty depressed by that point though, aren't you? Yeah, you're already <laughs> depressed. It's already, it's one of those games that's, that's depressing as hell, but great, you know. Would you class a fairy as a, or a pixie as an animal? Hey, listen, oh, yeah. listen. Fucking... What's no. a twat from Navi? No, Navi. You can't. You can't, cause, nah, because fairies you can't seem they're, to be like they're imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the hedgehog, though. <laughs> Fine. No, at least it's based on a hedgehog. <laughs> it's blue, though. <laughs> well, you could I mean, spray paint the hedgehog. You could. You'd also get taken away by the RSPCA. You know, they don't what do that, do they? Hey, yeah. not if you didn't get caught. For, for most, for one of the most annoying animals, and I don't know if they're in all of these games, but they're definitely in uh, Modern Warfare One and Two. The goddamn attack dogs. Oh well, you know, God, As soon yes. as you hear that barking, you're like, okay, here's a really annoying bit, and they jump on you, and you have to press your stick in at the right moment, mm. or you get your throat ripped out in one go. And it, the timing of it is so shit and unfair. There's a lot of games like that have that Ugh. kind of mechanic in them, and there was one I was playing the other week, and I can't remember what it is for the life of me now. It could have been Savage Lands actually. That had a, a particularly annoying dogs in it where they'd No, it wasn't. They didn't they didn't jump at your throat. Anyway. Yeah, that. I agree. Mm. <laughs> I'm obviously um, gonna chuck in uh, Amaterasu from Akami, the white wolf. Mm. Cool. I'm trying to think of other animals. There's been a lot. Worms from worms. Yeah, worms from worms. Lemmings from lemmings. <laughs> are, are worms classed as animals? Yeah, man, because oh. they are. They're, they're not, not people, minerals. They? Or the plants. They do no, talk right. in the later versions. They've all got uh, yeah. daft accents, haven't they? Yeah. They have. Is it Worms um, Armageddon where you can have the worms that's like the movie guys who are all doing like movie guy trailer voices and stuff? And they've all got little snippets. You could you could mod the early worms, the very the very first. No, maybe Worms 2, you could mod it, change all the WAV files on PC, and you could just have whatever you wanted playing. Yeah, when you used to do that with every game back then, just change every, just change the game into something else entirely. Yeah, yeah. Different models running around in uh, Quake and that. I can't really think of any other animals that have like. Oh, if we listed quite a few, to be fair. Off yeah, pretty quite quickly, a few. Yeah. Um, the uh, there's quite a lot of good ones in Red Dead Redemption as well. A lot, a lot. I'd say just the animals in Red Dead Redemption were just really well done. Oh, well, here you go. Here's an animal that I, any animals that I hate. The, the pigeons in GTA 4. Oh, yeah. Just just don't ever do that in a game, ever. What's the point? What, what annoys me about the pigeons is not the pigeons themselves, because that's like, fine, shoot the pigeons, it's part of the collectible. It's the fact that the way the police work in that game, so you have to shoot them, is the only way to get them. As soon as you fire a gun, the cops are on you. You're like, I'm not doing anything, I'm just doing the collectible part yeah, of this you're game. You're shooting a gun, though. That That is a arrestable offence, still. It's, unless I'm, yeah, but why set it up so that it's that way then? Like, have the hidden packages from the other games then? You I can mean, stab them. You can stab the pigeons if you want. Not a lot of them. They're not in places where you no. can reach them. Ah, you got a point. You got a point. That oh, was annoying. The fact that the you just, you're there going, I'm just doing a collect. You're basically doing collectibles in the game. Every time you try and do it, you get the police on your ass, which is annoying. It is annoying. So, yeah, they're, they're, the pigeons themselves weren't that bad, but the, the way the cops always came after you was fucking really irritating. Well, so, what about the dragons in? Uh, are they are they make believe? Are we not allowed the dragons in Skyrim? Yeah, no fan yeah, fantasy animals. As well. Yeah, dragons aren't real. God, the Komodo dragons in Far Cry Three, however. Yeah, Far Cry Three's got got a lot of good animals. Yeah. I quite, I really enjoy the hunting in that game. It's one of the few it, that and Red Dead Redemption are the two games I really enjoyed the hunting in. I quite like the yeah. Uh, what I liked about the animals in Far Cry Three 
is and you do it in Far Cry 4 as well but again it just felt a bit rehashed in that one was the fact that you could use them to cause chaos in it if you were trying to take over the um you know the the enemy encampments where you'd find like they'd had like a tiger in a cage. Yeah. Shoot the lock off the cage, let the tiger go to town, and just sneak up behind him and just start shooting with the bow and arrow. The back whilst they were trying to kill well, the tiger. Well, again, you, you could do that in Red Dead too as well. You could you could mind you they get they get destroyed as soon as they got near a town though, wouldn't they? Yeah, the animals you couldn't really lure them the same way. You could, but it wasn't it took you a while. <laughs> yeah, they were in cages as well. Any sharks in any game ever? Fucking hate sharks. Far Cry Not- Three, the sharks in Far Cry Three. There, <laughs> it's petrifying, was, isn't it? We're swimming around I, in it the is, water. I, I don't know what it is, it but is. it frightens the life out of me, and I will not get in the water, even in the com- you know in, in the video <laughs> in the computer game, which which has got no bearing on real life, no pain, nothing. But I but think I still that's brilliant. I, I think that's brilliant that a computer game can do that to you. That can it can make you actually scared. Like my, my wife does not like the sea at all. She won't get in a boat. She doesn't like. Um, she's, she's not a fan of Jaws, then. No, well, no, no, she's a fan of Jaws, but she she's not. Yeah, she just does not like the fact that the sea is is just so vast. I think that's what scares her. I think she does. She can't see what's coming at her, you know, from any angle and all that. And and that I like that a game can give you that same kind of fear. And the shark, I said, the sharks in. You, sometimes you'd you'd be swimming around in Far Cry Three, looking around. If you didn't have one of the the portion, not what were they called, the um, yeah, the oh, sense animal yeah. syringe. Yeah, if you didn't have one of them on, you pretty much could get attacked by a shark any second without really knowing it what was coming. I like that. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing I would have liked in that game is the fact that you've got this combat knife that you can use all the time. It's like, why can't I use it underwater? I always thought that it made you deliberately really handicapped underwater. Like, it, the same with Far Cry Four as well. It's like, well, I know I get that I don't can't be firing machine guns underwater a lot of the time because it it wouldn't work, but. Why can't I get my knife out and just at least have a little bit of a slash at a shark that's coming towards us? Mm, it's yeah, a bit yeah. annoying. Saving Grand Theft Auto as well. You can't do anything underwater when you're shark you, attack you in that game. You're knackered. Have you ever tried swinging a, a knife in water? Yeah. No, probably not that good. It's but, probably it's not possible, be really, because you you've got all the resistance, haven't you? I yeah, you but if you want to be someone, mega realistic you? about it, right? If you were to get in the water with your backpack with all your many guns then get out of yeah, the water yeah. and try and fire them they wouldn't work <laughs> and so. you'd also sink <laughs> yeah carry so like, like 12 tons worth of rocket like, launcher yeah. munitions on your back yeah you kind of like you've got your ammo capacity up so you carry like 500 machine gun rounds you're not going to do very well in the water but oh anyway. that was it I just remember the other game with the dog in it Um, the cyber dog thing it's not a cyber dog it's um, uh, Wolf oh, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein the New Order the bloody it's not an animal, it's a robot. Is it? Is it a robot or is it a... a is, is it a... Is it cybernetic? A robot. Is it cybernetic, yeah. It's... It, it has to be a pretty big dog. Oh, no, I'm thinking of the little ones. Not the big ones. Yeah, well, the, the little big... ones are just scaled-down versions of the big ones. Is it? <laughs> I, I thought there were dogs yeah. with, like, armour. I could have swore there were dogs <laughs> with armour. I might be wrong there, to be fair. So we're saying dogs are our favourite computer game animal i'm not saying dog i'm not saying favorite i hated them hated them no, most of the times they've we've just said they've been shit haven't we because <laughs> there's the ones that just kill you or being annoying you. but they've been the ones that you remember the most yeah yeah they're yeah, really the, the, yeah the ones in uh the dog meat also from fallout 3 who oh, i yeah. tried to keep that little it's fucker awful. alive <laughs> tried to keep him alive so hard and he just went off and fight super mutants and you're like you're a dog just <laughs> stop like what you're not uh, dog meat has died. I've seen that message so many times. Yeah, I try to keep him alive, so I ended up just not bothering. The amount of times, yeah, the amount of times that would happen, and it'd just be you, you're walking along, and he's dead. What? Yeah, he's not, dead. you're not even in a fight, and he's just ran off to bite a wall or something. <laughs> he just walked he's into a off, nuke. <laughs> or he's run off into that irradiated section near Vault One Eight Seven or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? <laughs> so. Well, um. I was thinking of the uh, no no I can't use that I can't say that. Oh, I was thinking of the skags in um, Borderlands because there's but they're not I, I wouldn't even put them in a list somewhere they're just what are they? The skag they're like little dogs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they're like mutant dogs. Well, they've got like, like jaws. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't I can't even show you because my obviously my camera. They open, on. they open sideways instead of. 
Yeah, they're they're pretty disgusting, but there's lots of them, they and then there's lots of super skags as well, like huge super badass skags. Skags. Super badass pirate Nazi skags. Depending on how many times you completed the game. <clears throat> Fair enough. Right, so let's move on then. I think we're running out. Oh, excuse me. So, news. Dude, Things that have happened, yeah. games that are coming out, releases, interesting articles, etc., etc. <clears throat> Events. Number one, um, when I went into the document to put in this news story, someone else had already put the news story in there with the Oculus VR has now been announced for a release in 2016. I imagine mm. it was Lou who put this in here because he'll be subscribed to the same newsletter as me. Yeah. Um, do we do we care? <laughs> We care that the Oculus is coming out in quarter one 2016. I think an yeah, official think release for it would be interesting, yeah. It's only people who are invested at this point, I think. There's there's too much noise with VR at the minute. It's so unclear what's going to happen, who's going to be, what the technology is going to be that is going to lead the way. So I think it's going to be a case of we wait until it actually gets released and then see what's happening then. Or I think... I Cool. It's expected in a year's time. A lot can change. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 what's the one that uh, Microsoft are working on? What's their version called? Their virtual uh, reality? HoloLens. That is but virtual, reality, virtual that's... reality. That's augmented. That's holographic, oh. basically. But I know Sony are working on a similar headset thing. Morpheus. Uh, which will be... But then they're talking about it being console compatible as well, the Oculus Rift. So they're going to have that available on the consoles when Microsoft and Sony are going to have their own work out as well, which seems a little bit... Um, well, that was the next that was Microsoft the next thing. But it's connected, isn't, isn't it? it? It isn't a VR headset. It's an, actu it's an augmented reality. Apples with apples here. No, but it's, it, it might... Apples and oranges. You couldn't play the games <laughs> that you're playing on an Oculus on a HoloLens. True. It's, it, it's, it, it's not the same. It, it's about putting it on and then having things displayed in your world instead of mm. completely closing out your world and having just a display of what's happening. I think I'm more interested in in virtual reality, I think, than uh, than augmented reality. I think augmented reality is not far enough along yet for it to be decent in a game environment. Although I did see something the other week about a horror game where you... you you held your mobile up, your mobile phone, and you, you put it, you, you basically let it scan your room or scan your house, and it's a, you, you, it basically manifests ghosts and, and like apparitions on your mobile, and you can play like a, a game on it to, it, it looks really quite scary in fact, uh, but it was, again, it was all marketing stuff, so it may not be as good as it looks. But every single I mean, augmented reality thing I've seen so far has been very much market speak, you know, there's not really been anything factual that I've seen yet, it's in very early phase. One thing to consider with the HoloLens, it's, a, it's not actually a dedicated games device. No. It's not meant, it can do games as part of its function, but it's well, it's, VR. That's not its purpose. VR has been pretty much developed for for the gaming industry this time round. Um, uh, Oculus it, Rift, it says on the front page, is being developed by a team of extremely passionate gamers. But it also has quite, what gaming can be. It also has yeah. quite a lot of other applications as well, though. Such as, well, training for uh, virtual reality training for um, for the armed forces, medical training for. Uh, I do not think that virtual reality will ever take over actual training for the armed forces because you're not moving around. Physical fitness and coordination, sitting in a chair. Moving I, I agree, but it has been touted as uh, as applicable in these circumstances. It could be for certain things like certain certain vehicular training, I guess, and things. If like that. If you're controlling a drone or something, or you know, yeah. something that's going to remotely take out a bomb, then fair enough. But it's. Its applications outside gaming are, are going to be very limited, I, f I think. Whereas the HoloLens isn't, it's aimed at, at other applications. I think we'll be surprised, you know. I think I have a feeling that it's going to be more useful outside of gaming. I think it'll be more successful outside of gaming. I think it will be released and touted as a gaming platform, but I think it will. F I, I'm putting myself on the line with this, but I think it's going to fail as a gaming platform. 
and I think it's going to it's going to get to a point where a few people have it, a few people are chuffed and happy with it and think it's really cool, but developers are just going to lose interest and stop developing things for it because either it's too hard or they're not getting enough sales based on the effort that they put in <clears throat> for the virtual reality side of things. They're not going to get payoff. None of the big AAA developers care about VR yet that I'm aware of. I'm, I'm not seeing many people invest in it. A couple of people invested in 3D when that came out, but that was when it was actually selling units, selling TVs. But well, that's died a death now. You don't see a single game that's got 3D in it now. They don't promote them as having 3D anyway. They don't. Yeah, they're not bothered about it. Well, they, they never really did, though, did they? I mean, Assassin's Creed uh, Three, Revelations. And, yeah, yeah, Three as well. Uh, and Arkham uh, City, I think it was, and also Killzone Two. They all came out with 3D at the time. Killzone 3, Killzone 2 wouldn't have yeah, been around. Okay, sorry, Killzone 3. They all came out with 3D based on, uh, you know, based on the TVs that were being sold at the time. But you know, they weren't big. They weren't big marketing points for it. It just, I, I just don't see. I just still, still don't see it being commercially viable. I don't see general gamers yet. Not yet. I think it's going to fail this time round. But I think it might make another comeback and be better and be applicable for gaming it needs to be lighter it needs to be less intrusive it needs to be less setup involved something like that something like a hololens well this is this i did say this a while back i think that the the hololens is it's got more potential but i just don't think that's anywhere near being ready yet i i, I, I think releasing it with windows 10 is extremely ambitious i have to be honest with you i know we're talking about you know huge conglomerate companies that have got millions and billions of pounds behind them dollars or whatever you want to call it i think that it's going to surprise people I because think... there's there's been a few things that have happened with, uh, with microsoft recently that everyone's questions well, buying minecraft buying nokia right there's this is all going to come to fruition oh right? it will and um like the news that was released um last thursday about Microsoft uh, changing the way that their um, Silverlight and Visual Studio work so that apps that are developed on the uh, iOS or the Android platforms will be able to be played through it with a small amount of conversion. Single-handedly there, they've just given themselves the biggest mobile app. No, I, I agree, and I, to be fair, I'm, I'm an advocate of Microsoft. That is my career. I'm a Microsoft developer. I I, I use Visual Studio all the time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm more than aware of the... the technology advancements in it and i agree i think that i think that whatever microsoft have planned for all of this is going to be big and i think it's going to be revolutionary i think they're going to hit the nail on the head now i think what they're doing right is that they're keeping it quiet in terms of they're not they're not talking about it like oculus did for example with the vr stuff they're not talking about yeah. it everywhere and all over the place and giving you all the details they're not letting anybody else in on the augmented reality market really it's a good and yeah. a bad thing. You've got, you've got antitrust issues there, probably that are probably going to come to fru again to fruition in some way. But they, they've basically done a quick marketing spiel about it. They've talked about it being integrated into Windows 10, and they've given you some marketing videos that basically say this is the ideal situation. But we go back to the Connect videos when they came out. Connect marketing <clears throat> was much better than the Connect product. Mm -hmm. The product itself was impressive in my eyes it was uh non-intrusive the setup was still a bit too much of an effort for some people but they, they they've also again forced it on the new generation of xbox owners so it's it's a it's a combination of marketing and um you see when it comes to connect i don't think it was a miss as I, you do no i don't because no, the no. connect itself is being used in hundreds of applications the military use it the medical Look, industry the, use it this is security industry use it the film industry use it you're just proving my point earlier about about vr no i'm sure talking about vr this isn't vr but vr is going to do the this same this is a stereographic camera system no i I, can also I, capture volume. I use connect to capture to capture my own body movements so i can mm -hmm. use that for animation data for games that i develop no yeah, but I don't mean, you I compare that to vr because vr in itself is a very closed system whereas having a stereographic camera can has off the shelf got thousands of, of, of applications 
I think I still think there are a lot more applications to VR than you're giving it credit for. I think there will be. Oh, I'm I'm sure there's a couple of hundred things that it will do very well, but that'll be it. I I I've, I'm still failing to see the difference really between connect or augmented reality being more applicable than than VR. Uh, you know, because it's VR's all... a, a a closed system. I don't think gaming... VR you can only see what's in front of your eyes. There's yeah. augmented reality. You can be walking around and you can start getting information tags popping up over things. You can watch a movie. You can Skype with someone. On the uh, the marketing spiel, there's a um, a plumber who's looking at a woman's feed from the camera when she's trying to fix a pipe. He's identifying on his like, tablet what you need to do. And that's appearing augmented around the actual thing she's trying to fix. Hmm. You know, there's 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 a lot more implication there's a lot more applications to it i we, believe we, we've been seeing augmented reality in science fiction for for decades you know we, we see it on all kinds of things we've seen it in games for decades you know heads up displays for example that's augmented reality when you think about it i know it's in a game it's not quite the same thing but it's that the i i i'm excited i'm not i'm not really arguing against you here i'm just saying i don't really see that much of a difference between all three of those technologies really they're I all think... just peripherals to help uh, help a, a medium come across to, to users in some way i i appreciate what you're saying about the vr being more closed probably has less applications but also the world is becoming very reliant on virtual on the virtual world the internet has has blown up over the last 10 20 years and it is it's now it's it's now an everyday thing for most people on the planet or mo well okay most of, so i hate using the term but most of the civilized world if you know what i mean they the internet is, is developed well yeah the, yeah. the developed world sorry the, the the internet is is fundamental to to most of the developed world these days you know, yeah. it's it's a wonderful bit of bit of kit, but it's also the worst thing that's happened to 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 the planet since you know anything. And I think the in, the internet has become affordable for people. I just don't see something like virtual reality becoming affordable very quickly. Augmented it, reality, maybe, <clears throat> maybe, maybe a bit I more see, potential. I don't know what well, the cost of the reality headset costs less than a virtual reality headset. Say that again, Steve, sorry. Why would an augmented reality headset cost less than a virtual reality headset? I would imagine I just, because there'd be less hardware involved in it, less a expensive A virtual reality components. headset, you've got a screen. Or an augmented reality, you have to have a medium to project an image and also something that can project that image at that higher res, at that closer distance, at a much higher refresh rate, so it doesn't lag when you're moving. Right, so are you saying it would cost more or wouldn't? I don't, I'm not an expert, I don't, I don't know. For manufacturing costs alone, the augmented reality must be more expensive. Okay, well, so I'll take your word for that, I don't know. It, it could be a slight Betamax VHS situation, maybe the, the cheaper VR one. I mean, it will be more popular, but then you've got like things like um, smartphones and things like that or something that were really really expensive when they first came out and now everybody's got one but they're still... I, I it, yes i know to buy a top of the range one it is still really expensive but you can go and get a serviceable smartphone of an older model that will do the job for you for not that much money now yeah the thing is though if if you would have said 10 years ago that you know 25 percent of the people in the uk will willingly spend over 500 pound on this little device you'd be like 500 pound that's a fortune you're crazy well, people do it willingly. Yeah, right, okay, okay. The fine so, so it, it, depends, it depends on, to make, for my, like Stephen was saying, it depends how how useful they can make it. If they make exactly. it so that it feels indispensable, then yes, it will be successful. Now, whether it will or it won't, I think that the fact that you've got to wear a headset on your head is going to be a bit of an issue for a lot of people. And I think, I think the fact that with VR, you have to be in one place. Yeah, you, you can't really, it's not portable, where with, with um, augmented reality, the point of it is that it's portable. Yeah. That will appeal yeah. to people more, even if you do have to wear a pair of glasses, you know, it's, I mean, isn't Google Glass augmented reality, essentially? But Google Glass, all that was doing was, uh, 
it was more of an extension of your mobile phone than augmented reality. You couldn't actually. The way like that a, the HoloLens like works is that it, really? it's it's basically got a, a connect fitted to it as well. So when you put your hand out and go like that, it can sense where you are, where you're moving, what you're doing, and it can interpret that to functions on whatever you're displaying. Right. Um, the Google thing was supposed to be done by eye movement. It didn't work because people had to look somewhere else than what they would, like where they were going, what they were doing, in order to make it function right. It was it was taken off the shelves. I mean, that's got to speak volumes. What the Google Glass is actually being taken off the shelves, is it right? I, did, I, oh, I yeah. don't follow these trends that much, so I didn't, I didn't know that. Has been available for sale for months now. Right, fair enough. One thing that is interesting is if if you look at the development partners from a software point of view that are involved in augmented reality compared to virtual reality. Virtual reality, you've got a few game studios. Augmented reality, you've got the likes of uh, Autodesk. Um, you've got Dassault Systems, who basically own all the 3D development software in the world these days. I mean, the, the engineering and structural 3D development software. Yeah, yeah. NASA, um, Walt Disney, Unity. Um, loads of massive, massive, lots of money companies are involved in it. Yeah. And they wouldn't be throwing their money at it if they didn't have useful applications for that. I, I said, I, I agree. I think, I think that augmented reality will hit hit it big and I don't think that VR is going to hit it big now as I said I, don't, I, I can't remember what we were arguing about though I have to be honest with you I'm not uh, sure we were it, it, I don't think there was an argument it was more of a discussion about yeah. what the merits are the of validity. each I would, yeah, yeah what, the, what, what each merits are and I think that the sort of the closed off um in your own little world nature of VR is going to be more of a turn off for a lot of people than something that is can be integrated into like life you know it's that's what augmented reality is probably going to well that's what they want to do isn't it that's the that's how they marketed it in that video that we watched that we all saw um mm. a few months ago but i think that, that it's it's a more intriguing option it that's more the, the augmented reality seems like more of a of a at the sort of sci-fi Star Trek type step that we kind of would like to see in our lifetimes in a lot of ways to me uh, if they make it affordable I'd be up for it I think yeah. I think the virtual reality is, is 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 very much a pipe dream purely because people don't want virtual reality they want total immersion yeah but they can't yes. have it so virtual reality is kind of like some of that's within reach that's kind of like it mm. but I mean it's, like it's my experience yeah, of VR is is wonderful. I enjoyed it. I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't knock it in terms of the experience, but I just think thinking about it as a commercial product, I just don't see it. I just don't see it coming to full fruition. I, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope that they can make it so it's it's accepted by more than just gamer, you know, hardcore gamers that are really into niche games that 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 use this. I hope it becomes the standard for gaming across across the industry. But how many how many peripherals for consoles have we been through now that have just you know just risen risen and then just dropped off the face of the earth a second later the the PlayStation Eye the PlayStation got, Move the Connect the everything all the none Virtual of that. Boy the, the the gun thingy that the Nintendo had the, like gun, the thing yeah. is though they've, they've only got to get it right once exactly you're right it'll, yeah it'll be a paradigm changing event and then it'll yeah. all go that way. And, and you know what? We, we sit here naysaying. We sit here complaining about it. But at the same time, I'm with you there. And I think if if people if if people didn't try this stuff, we wouldn't advance in terms of what I what I would really like. I mean, I, I'd really like gaming to be more accepted and gaming to mature more than it is. I know I sit here and complain about oh, all the kids playing Destiny and only playing FIFA and COD, and I wish they'd get into better games. But when I think about it, it's also making games more acceptable in the mainstream, you know. I can talk to other adults about games, you know. Uh, mm. other I say adults because they grew up in roughly the same age as me now, but I can talk to them seriously about them, not just, oh, I was playing a game last night and, and it was cool because I killed someone, you know, whatever. Because that's what yeah. you're doing games, isn't it? But you can, I can talk to people. I'm mean, talking to you guys seriously about gaming subjects and that's that excites me more than anything, I think. Uh, and yeah, you're right. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, while we're on loosely tied into uh, the Microsoft, um, the, there was another press release the other day, and apparently um, everyone 
is going to be able to get Windows 10 regardless whether or not if you've got an illegal version of Windows they'll still give you a free upgrade <laughs> what? oh right, sorry if is, you've is got Windows an illegal version of pretty much yeah why? It's, are they doing a pay, pay to win model? <laughs> well <laughs> if, if you think about things in general these days like if, if you buy because everything's getting more modular um, like people are moving away from building their own computers and whatnot. it's a very niche thing to do these days um, so if you go out and buy a console, you, you don't pay for the operating system. You buy a mobile phone, you don't pay for the operating system. Hmm. It's kind of expected these days that this this just comes for free, and the wow. company makes its money off the licensing for it. Yeah, mm. it is so. If, 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 if you go out and pay seven hundred pound for your mobile phone and then shell out one hundred and fifty pound for the OS, you'd be fuming. No, you're right, but they, they include that in the price, surely. I think I mean it's it's included in the price when you when you go and get like a I bought my laptop, the operating system was part of the the price. Came with it. But did you pay for the operating system when you bought your PS4? Was it even a consideration? No, no, no. no, no. So what I'm saying it wasn't the advertised but price for my laptop was was the price that included the yeah it's already on there. Consoles have come from from a history of of literally you put a cartridge or a disc into it and it loads that game. That's where it. I know there's an operating system involved in that, but people who play the con, people who played old consoles didn't really think about the operating system. It was just literally plug it in, works. Okay, it's a game. Not consoles. Um, if you bought an Amiga, if you bought an Amstrad, did you pay for the operating system? You could. Or do you, you could pay for add-ons to it. Of yeah. for development kits, but the operating system came no, with the computer. I, I get that, but it would still be included in the, the development co in, to, in the, the retail price. Yeah, so it's just, what again, they're doing this then, is just marketing. It's not. It's no different, really, apart from with PCs. Of course, because, it's marketing because PCs market. because PCs are by their very nature modular. We pay for every single little bit of software diff separately because we can customize that PC to what we want uh, as uh, our PC experience to be. So I don't have to have Windows on my with my computer. I can have Linux for free because that's, again, where Linux has come from, open source. I can put, now in these days anyway, I, if I really wanted to, I could probably buy Mac OS X or X, whatever it's on now. Why don't you? Because cause, cause fuck, fuck off. Because shit. Because fuck off. But no, but anyway, no, yes. But so we, we come from as PC gamers, and this is this is one of the things that gets constantly complained about as a gamer, as people are on Steam saying, "Oh, I can't mod this game. I'm pissed off because I can't mod this game." That's one that the mentality of PC users is that they want complete customizability, if that is a word. Yeah. So, from from October, I believe it is onwards, it seems pretty much like you can get. Windows for free, legitimately. You know I'm what? Sure, you still have to pay for the professional version. There'll still be, there'll still be a um, some caveat there saying like you can't use the calculator unless you buy it on the App Store or something like <laughs> that. There'll be something ridiculous. All the stuff that's built into Windows that we we get for free, and I'm doing <coughs> inverted commas here, by the way. But you pay to win. They haven't done that on any yeah. other model because on the mobile phone platform, for example, um, there's. There's a lot of applications that Microsoft have put on there for free. Applications that if they run another platform, they would charge a fortune for. Like the Translator app, it's a, a program that literally, if, if you in Germany say you've got a German menu, you hold the camera in front of it and it translates it live on screen for you. You know what? It's about time because they've made, the, they've made the money off this stuff yeah. already. And you get a lot of app developers that release like the calculators like scientific <coughs> calculator charge you 199 you think well no because microsoft have got one there for free mm. so why would you pay for it depends on if you if you want a different type of calculator or that calculator's got a particular yeah. feature that you then want on the it. option to do that yeah exactly that's what people want options and as you quite rightly pointed out everything is becoming modular mm. mobile phones tablets um, laptop. I mean, we've obviously as PC PC people, PC people can can customize a PC. But when you buy a laptop, one thing I've always hated about laptops is that that's it. That's your laptop. Essentially, you yeah. can upgrade them, but it's not easy. It's not it's very limited. Yeah, and it's very limited as to what you can upgrade. So when I buy a laptop, I spend usually quite a lot of money to get exactly the spec that I want for that moment in time, knowing fine well that tomorrow it's going to be out of date. You know. There's probably going to be a new version of that laptop release that's slightly better, that costs slightly less, 
uh, you know. But it is, it is what it is, you know. I think we've just ranted on about this for like the last three quarters of an hour now. We have, we have. Um, so let's move on. So I just wanted to quickly, Sam briefly touched on this uh, on this next one, which is Oculus Rift uh, potentially available for the Xbox and PlayStation 3. We kind of brushed over the point, but I think it's quite an important one to mention. Now, I don't see this happening. I think this is a rumour as it stands. And uh, I, I, so I can't see it happening because... Xbox, maybe, potentially, they may say, they may partner up with Oculus Rift and go, yep, yeah, we haven't got our own VR platform, so throw it on, just for, fu just for fun. But PlayStation, absolutely no chance, because they've got Morpheus and they need to push Morpheus. Yeah, they're not, they're not going to want to support that third-party peripheral when they've got their own. Just no way. I will, I will eat my webcam if... Unle unless it's if, a case of... You know how, it, I mean, it's a different situation, but you know how where the Blu-ray HD DVD thing, where the three Xbox 360, would it play HD DVDs? Yeah. Now the Xbox One the HD plays. DVD. Did you? Well, that's rubbish. Blu-ray player was in your PS4, it, PS3. Say that again, sorry, Steve, you broke up then. If you wanted to play HD DVDs on an Xbox 360, you had to buy an external HD DVD I, player, which looked I'm, like a little mini Xbox 360. Oh, I'm certain that that was a factor in why it didn't succeed. Because uh, if you had that, I, I, the Elite, the Elite only played DVDs. That's wow. a lie because I played a HD DVD on mine. It's not a lie. Check the specs. So it only ha no, that's wrong. I'm pretty positive that I played. By the HD time the Elite DVD. came out, the um, the HD DVD Blu-ray war was already over. Yeah, but well, the the they still had the HD DVD because I've had two Elites now. I, I the point the point I've had was a the DVD it, player in my Elite, and it's just a normal Panasonic DVD player. My point was is that if the Oculus Rift is a, a runaway success and it obliterates any other virtual reality people that want to even get their foot in the door. Then yeah, Sony might have to adopt it and get rid of another one, but I don't see it really, because that's what happened with the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray won that fight, so now Xbox Ones play Blu-rays. That's the format that you buy in the shops as Blu-ray if you want to get HD yeah. films or whatever. So I think if Oculus Rift can do that, then yes, but it's not. It isn't the same situation, and I don't see Sony going for it personally. I wonder what if they if Nintendo have got anything in line about that. I've not looked it up, but if they've going to bother with the virtual reality thing they don't really do first person games that much nintendo metroid they're not really in that market are they no. i wonder they might anyway. wait to see which direction it goes i'm sure chris has just searched google for the xbox 360 hd dvd player and now he's very yeah, yeah. now he's like reading wrong. <laughs> You're reading that it was only available as an external device well, I'm, I'm reading that there was an external device available i was not aware of but I'm, I'm I, um, positive I've played a HD because I got someone bought me a HD DVD of something. I've got it downstairs and I played it in my 360. But it won't have been HD. Maybe, yeah, maybe it had uh, both versions on the disc. That'd be weird though, wouldn't it? Oh, no, no, no. They, they, they do do that though, don't they? A lot of. Um... On the same disc, usually they don't. They have different discs. But I'm not sure about the, how the <clears throat> HD DVD was structured compared to a Blu ray disc because apparently a Blu ray disc is. Very different to it. It was DVD. just a higher density DVD. It was a Blu-ray. Right, okay. It was a different technology. Right, that might be it. Blu-ray so was, was, was up to eight side, up, up to eight tracks of. Yeah, I think it went up to about um, fifty or eighty gigabytes or something. Blu-rays, don't they? The yeah, well, they, data. they had a problem with loading. Obviously, the ps 3s load times are still quite bad. And even Bloodborne, when that came out, had really bad loading times on it, which have been patched now. See, the thing is. Um, optical media like that it's fine if you're streaming something like a movie mm. which is fine but when you need uh, to load a lot of textures and information really quickly it's not that good no well fuck a duck you're right of course I'm right <laughs> that's just, just that. <laughs> I, I, I was very vehement in my answer that it was definitely that I don't know, but the, I, I was absolutely... I've never been so positive about think, obviously dumb. thinking it was a HD DVD. I thought that was the point. The, the point was that the 360 came out with the HD DVD and the PS3 came out with a Blu-ray player and Blu-ray won and then PS3 won that kind of format battle as well in general. Well, I, I wonder if that was the factor because I wouldn't have bothered to start... I wouldn't have bothered buying Blu-rays 
to watch if I didn't have a PS3 to play on. I wouldn't have gone out and bought a separate player. Would I? Well, it was the cheapest. It was the cheapest Blu-ray player when it came out as well. It was indeed. But if the if the HD DVD functionality was built into the 360, given how popular that console was, I think they would have won. How many people would have been like, "Yeah, I'll get the new." It was probably too expensive to put it in there, probably, and that's why, probably why they made the decision not to. I, I, that is a anyway. revelation. I've, I've just been schooled. I'm sorry. I, I totally was under the impression that that was the case. There you go. Anyway, let us let us move yeah. on to the next the next story. Now I've been proven wrong. So Mortal Kombat 10, 16 gigabyte patch, uh, 16 gigabyte patch to start off with. <laughs> Yeah, come before on. we move on to the next bit, <laughs> that's not bad. That's just re-downloading the game. Yeah, isn't it? fuck a doodle yeah. duck. What the hell? That's, that's basically half the game again. Surely. I mean, I know we've got 150 meg broadband connections and that these days, but come on, that's still yeah, that's what, what, easy. What, even with even with like loads of new characters with no, loads of new textures and all. I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of 8K textures with uh, you've got your your diffuse, your normal, your specular. Yeah, and and all all of the diffuse, uh, sorry, the normal specular and um, roughness maps, and all the other stuff that goes on them, they're all quite small in comparison to the diffuse texture, because the diffuse texture is a full color, and then all your other ones is just like data. It's the information telling you how bumpy your texture is and how uh, how many angles, uh, you know, how the the light shines off it and things like that. And they're not very they're not very complicated. So how how many how much information is in this this patch? What have we got from it? It, God, it, I don't even know. It's crazy. And 16 gig isn't big enough for the game, surely. With all no, the, the game, how much is there going to be in the game? It's not exactly got massive environments. It'll no, well, only be a remake. Well, I was thinking there that will as be well. very detailed thinking... there because they're quite small. But with the smaller the environment, the more detailed they usually are. And you've only got what, 12, 14 characters? No, I, I, think, there's, I, think, there's a, I think there's a good 20 odd actually. I think the the roster's actually quite good. But anyway, yeah. it, the, the new patch, this new 16 gig patch, actually deleted the player's saves. So there was a, there was problems with it. They, they patched it out, and then the patch has decided, right, you can't play with your characters and the progression. The, the plus side so is far. that on, a, on my experience of fighting games is that even if it deletes all your saves, if you know what you're doing, you can just pretty much complete the game again with each character pretty goddamn quick. Like if you're good, yeah. The, the people that would be interested in fighting games these days are people that want to play them online. So as long as you get your unlocks back pretty quickly. I doubt that's going to be that big of a problem for people. I've seen people few... have played it and say otherwise, and fair enough. But... I've seen a few of my friends playing Mortal Kombat uh, 10, but I haven't bought it, and I have no intention to either. I've, I'm bored of fighting games, generally. I play it with a friend from that... another house, but... Yeah, you know. I wouldn't mind a glove, but I wouldn't buy it myself. Yeah, if I, if I bought if I played it somewhere and I was like, this is amazing, I'll buy it, but I think it's unlikely I'll ever get in that situation. Mm -hmm. Um, right, so Kill Zone Four. Um, some some Californian dude decided to. Uh, I think it was August two thousand fourteen. He decided to raise a, a lawsuit because um, because it's not true ten eighty p. It projects in ten eighty p. Sorry, it doesn't project in ten eighty p. It is a ten eighty p image for Kill Zone Four. But what they do is every second line that's projected on the screen, they redraw previous frames and it's called temporal reprojection so what they do is they they cheat it into thinking that it's a lot higher quality than it was it's quite an expensive process to do this on the gpu apparently but it was less expensive than rendering it all as 1080p this guy decided to file a lawsuit against sony because they marketed it as 1080p it wasn't true 1080p yeah. but it was so good that no one noticed the difference anyway I, I've just I've just heard about this today, but it's it's fell through anyway. This lawsuit, so he's now basically got egg on his face for for nothing, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Why has it fell through? Uh, probably because they just laughed him out of court. It, it looks all right to me. It's still it's projecting in 1080p. I would imagine people probably haven't. Uh, I can looked. imagine that it's the, it's the kind of thing where the legal system they're not they, yeah they can't differentiate it well enough. People like that informed about their technology to really say that well, it's it, worth making a, a, laws, a legal battle over. It's taken nearly a year for it to go through. I mean, what, we on May 2015? Yeah. July, August, the, so yeah, the, nine that, months. That, that game's been out over a year, hasn't it? I'm sure. To me, it's like, I understand why people do these things. But this is this, do, this seems to be just some kind of 
pedestrian, you know, it's not somebody in the industry or anything like that who's raised this lawsuit. And I don't know if he's just chancing it to see if he can make money out of Sony. Apparently Sony have settled out of court as well. So we don't obviously we don't know what the, the situation is there, but it's interesting to So they might have just gone have some money and shut up, will you? Basically. Yeah, maybe. I don't they might know. have done. I mean if it genuinely wasn't ten eighty P then yeah, I guess it's false advertising, isn't it? But but it's it depends what I just said. Did, did it say that this game generates images at 1080p or this will display 1080p on your TV? Well, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs. I haven't looked at the, the papers, <laughs> the filing papers, etc. Uh, EverQuest 2 has got duck mounts. And this is like ducks as in ducks on the pond type thing. Yeah. It's, it's, but on, like those other ride. type of ducks. Well, I just... I'm saying ducks on the pond instead of duck mounts, as in it's a mount that ducks. Uh, it looks like Skyward Sword. Uh, I just thought it was quite a funny story, to be fair. There's a video on that, uh, on the GameSpot article I've just pasted into the chat as well. Obviously, you guys have a look at it outside of the outside of the chat, but it's it's quite funny. I thought it was... It's basically the EverQuest 2 team um, taking the piss out of themselves. A lot of self-deprecation going on, and uh, it's just funny. <clears throat> Move on then. No one cares about that. That's fine. Well, I don't, I don't play EverQuest. So. No, neither do I. But <laughs> mounts were basically things that you they were quite coveted back when I used to play uh, World of Warcraft, and I think EverQuest Two had mounts in them. I don't think mm. EverQuest One did, though. I don't think you could have mounts in, in EverQuest One. Not when I played it, anyway. Um, this uh, PT has been now now actually been pulled from PSN and you can't install it anymore. So I've just found out well that PT stood for Playable Teaser. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either until I read that article. So this is um, this is the PT, which is the Silent Hill thing. If uh, for, again for those who yeah who haven't been paying which, attention to if, any news again, if you look up look up any Let's Play of that and you'll see that it was an in, in, it could have been a very interesting game had the full game come out and now it looks like it might be scuppered which is a shame it's not a might it is 100% totally been removed there's it's been totally no, 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 confirmed the, the, but the full game development is that just over over done done and dusted uh, Guillermo <laughs> del Toro said it's not happening uh, Hideo Kojima's been sacked from from yeah, uh, yeah. economy that's it and oh, you guys not got over that yet Oh, shit, sorry, I just mentioned it. <laughs> that, it, is related, it is related to this game. It is related it's, to that. that this, he was, was, quite, he was, was directing it. It was quite popular as well, PT, amongst horror fans and Silent Hill fans as well. Because it became pretty apparent to people quickly that it was to do with Silent Hill. Yeah, yeah. Well, so everyone, knew, when it, everyone knew it was a Silent Hill game. And obviously Silent Hill's got a pretty big fan base. Yeah, even I mean, if the series has gone... Shit, even if the games have gone shit... And so, I would have, I would have genuinely loved for that for that series to have come back, like as a forty well, record with. I would have bought it, but nah, apparently the gone. series is still. Economy have said that the series is still getting worked on. But, yeah, they're just gonna uh, they're just gonna do what they did before. They're gonna outsource it to a, a developer who'll make another generic Silent Hill game. It'll be crap. Yeah. Like they have done the past like four times. Well, I know no, Shattered no, Memories was Shattered good. Memories was made, very good. Yeah, but they've made a few. They've made Silent Hill for the room. They've made. Uh, the the homecoming one there was downpour they've made a lot of Silent Hill games that have been mediocre to bad other than Shattered Memories mm. which was a Wii exclusive as well don't forget the other games were multi-platform so they've kind of just mined out the franchise and made it a bit crap like they have a Resident Evil yeah I think it's it's a shame that PT uh, I mean it, even though I probably wasn't going to play it because I'm a pussy and I hate horror games and scare games um, unless the missus was really, really going to be into it. In fact, she would have been because Norman Reedus was was going to be in it, and she's a big fan of The Walking Dead and you know that whole. Well, she she loves him in in general. That whole Daryl Dixon kind of Daryl. Is it Dixon? Is that his yeah. second name? Um, you know, like that so. fandom. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a shame, and I think that I think the the fact that you can't even reinstall it, even if you had it installed before. Now that's the point that this article's trying to make. Yeah, that's the really bad thing about it. I mean, even if a game, the full game goes under, you go, well, that little demo you released, at least that can still be out there. I mean, it's it's been made, it exists. Well, I actually, I, seem... I haven't been on Twitter very much over the last few weeks, but I did pop on the Twitter when this article was announced, and um, the everybody, all of the, all of the 
guys that are you know think themselves funny we're, we're talking about it and saying it's now an urban legend and you can tell your kids about pt you know it never actually existed but it was yeah, it's a, yeah i think i don't know we'll see we'll see what happens with it but i think it's unlikely anything's going to happen with that now i think bridges are being burned and uh it's not really going to get any further oh well it just sucks for for the people that want a good horror game i guess mirror's edge 2 has been announced to be due in 2016 I haven't said when yet uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the first one I think it was very it was cool and different and it's basically started off all of the nearly every single first person game now with having parkour in it uh, to some extent anyway uh, so I'm mm. quite looking forward to this I just wanted to mention it I don't know if you guys have played the original or care about it I found it not quite semi well, yeah. I played your copy of it Chris a bit um, and I got to the. I think there's a section where you seem to be craw craw crawling out of an underground section in a what seems to be a really large circular area. It's like a sewer area, a bit. So I don't know how many how far I was into the game, but I played a couple of hours and it was all right. But I wasn't massively engrossed in it. I just thought, again, yeah. Mirror's Edge. What Mirror's Edge Two has been in development for quite a while now, and I've got high hopes for it um, because I enjoyed the mechanics in the first one. I thought it was interesting. The story was a little bit meh, whatever. I don't care. But the um, I liked the ideas in the in the mechanics, and I hope that they've improved it. The gunplay was absolute shoddy rubbishness. But, but you I, weren't supposed to really use guns in it. That was the point, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I'm quite looking forward to that anyway. Uh, Thirty three D Realms games are now available in an anthology on Steam. Now this may have excited me, uh, maybe four or five years ago because I, I didn't have all of the games that are on there then but now I've pretty much got all of the games that I've, I've got from various deals and and this that and the other uh, plus to be fair none of them apart from Duke Nukem I'm not that much of a fan of 3D Realms yeah the advertisement says like 30 legendary games I'm like uh, that's stroking your own dick a little bit too much let's be fair yeah legendary is yeah, a strong threat there's one game you'd probably say was legendary. That's, that's Duke it. Nukem. That's it. Duke Nukem 3D is uh, probably has achieved yeah. legendary. It's a it's a it's a game that is part of gaming history. Yeah, the other ones on there, nah, not really. Anyway, that's just advertising bollocks. I mean, it. But... Yeah, Metal Gear Solid clothing line, 1984 collection. Yeah, what is that? That just sounds like another bit of Metal Gear Solid like bullshit that they put out yeah. it doesn't mean anything i agree i only wanted to mention it just to annoy steve to be fair steve and luke <laughs> um i wasn't listening oh, that's fine yeah, like, it, as soon as he hears the word metal it doesn't matter where it goes we can be talking about metal music but metal marines just usually metal gear solid metal marines just, was an awesome game ooh. back in the day anyway yeah bollocks i'm not even going to paste a link to that in chat because it's it's bullshit. But uh, part of the, it the, is bullshit. The, the only reason that that was relevant to, to point out is that the 1984 collection was supposedly all, all the fan super fans thought that it was uh, it was going to be a new Metal Gear Solid release, and uh, you know there's going to be a a collection of Metal Gear Solid games, but it's not. It's just a clothing line and economy. Yeah. And went, yep, that's right. So basically, the cashing in before everybody gets on the bandwagon goes right. You've kicked Kojima out. We're not interested in you anymore. Fuck off, economy. Etc. Etc. Yeah. Anyway, Black Mesa has now reached uh, Steam early access. I thought it was already on Steam. Do you remember? No, um, it was released as a standalone um, game in I don't know a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, uh, well, it was two thousand and eight. It was originally released uh, as a unfinished game, I believe, and. Uh, it's now got onto Steam Early Access because I think it had a Kickstarter or something like that last year or early on this year and uh, they're, they're going to finish it hopefully and I think when that happens I'll, I'll get it I, pl I think I did download the the version uh, that you could get a while back but I haven't I haven't played it too much but looking forward to that uh, well yeah. have you played it, did you say you played any of it or rather have you played any of it I played a little bit at the beginning yeah but I just thought I haven't got time for this at the time it was originally yeah. released as a Source mod, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a Source 2 mod, I think. So it was like a HD it, version of, of 
first game. Is that what it is? Is it just exactly the same thing with the same it's everything? A, except it's a just fan graphics? made fan made version of it essentially. So it'll yeah. be uh, it'll be as authentic as it comes, I think. And the fact that it's now on Steam though, that's interesting. It's interesting that yeah, so Valve have allowed that. Valve must have okayed it. Yeah, they have yeah, to have. Exactly. Um, Unless they've got no interest in the Half Life franchise anymore. Nah, don't be daft. Don't be daft. They're still making money off it. Yeah, because because Half Life Three's had loads of news about it. Yeah, but it'll be one of those things that when it hits, it'll hit and it'll hit big, and everybody wants it. And I but don't think anyone a, will ever get bored of wanting it either. Will it be uh, Duke Nukem Forever though? Where it's been so long, they haven't. And even if it, it is, even if it is good. What if it just it might get to the point where we'll expect it to like change our lives, and it might just be a good game, and it'll be like, well, that's not good enough, <laughs> you know? Well, Valve don't make the installments of Oh, sorry. Say that again. English. This is what I was. Valve don't make third installments. Well, that's what I was talking about earlier. If they can somehow work in Portal Three and Half Life Three into one sequel, that like merges the two together, would just be awesome. That's that. That'd be my ultimate dream: is to make those two games somehow work together. So you have to fire the gravity gun through portals <laughs> somehow. <laughs> gravity gun in one hand, portal gun in the other. That's all you need. Superb. <laughs> that'd live up to my expectations if you could do that shit. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. You might be. You might be the only person to think of that. I think that's. I don't think I am. <laughs> <laughs> Just look in there, because if, if you go to the Valve collection, all the games stop at two. Yeah. So you got Portal. Maybe that was in their company Dead, manifesto. Team Fortress, Half-Life. I think that's kind of yeah. good, though, at the same time. I don't want... I'd rather they, were, they started working on a new franchise than... Remember they, that Valve don't all... need to make games anymore, though. They're already making an absolute shit ton through Steam. My only issue, they, they could leave Portal 2 as it was, because the way it ended is kind of like, you could kind of see that as an ending, it doesn't need to be continued, fine. But Half-Life 2 had a story that was going on that they haven't concluded. So mm. that it, if nothing else, I'd like them to finish that. Even if they go, we'll publish like a comic book c c ending to the story, just so it's got some closure. You know, That's the thing that I want, a bit of closure. You know, if they did do it though, they would have to, they would have to even if they just did Half-Life 3, they would have to have the portal gun in there at some point in the game. Even if it's not like a full crossover, there would have to be some kind of cameo of that in there now. Because mm. it's so ingrained in the in the Valve universe, you know? In the Half-Life cool. kind of universe. Yeah. It's just such a cool idea. And there's no reason not to, really, when you think about it. When you think about how, how the game... Got I mean, it. The varied environments that you go through in both Half-Life and Half-Life 2. Um, there's no reason not but the to. Portal but the portal gun only works on moon rock painted surfaces, so I have to explain that as well, I guess. Or change how the portal gun works, I don't know. Moon rock painted surfaces? Yeah, they made a big point of that in Half-Life uh, uh, Portal 2, that the... That isn't the case to, in 1, though. Pretty sure that they isn't the case isn't that, isn't, isn't that like a retcon thing, though? Because the portal gun only works on the surfaces that have got the white paint on them, and you can't portal onto absolutely everything. It's only on the surface. No, it's, it's, it's only surfaces, surfaces that have got the uh, the ground up moon dust particles in. Because that's why it yeah, works exactly. on the surface of the moon. Spoiler! Yeah, spoiler for the ending <laughs> of the game. That right, is one of the coolest endings anyway, ever. Steve. <laughs> that is really cool. It is awesome, yeah. Such a cool ending. So cool. Anyway. <laughs> right, Grand Theft Auto V, or rather um, Rockstar, apparently are banning people for using single player mods, such as modifying your FOV. Uh, well, anything, any of the single player mods. So, you, excuse me for a second. need to go somewhere, yeah. Um, which I think this is an accident. I think they're not doing it on purpose. I think it's mm. it's a bug in the system somewhere um, because GTA 5 are very, uh, sorry, uh, Rockstar are, they've, they've put a few kind of, uh, a few things out there saying, Sorry, our mistake. We shouldn't really be doing this. We're we're, we're behind modding. We, you know, we, we we like the community modifying things and and changing things up. However, we do want to balance multiplayer. So basically, if you're using a single player mod and you even have it installed or you have it anywhere near the game and you go into the online mode, people are getting banned. The whole Steam page is completely ram packed full of negative reviews with people saying I'm getting banned because I'm using 
various single player mods, which I think is they need to fix it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll be that's honest. A, yeah, it's a legitimate complaint, isn't it? It is legitimate. If it is legitimate, I mean, I don't. I'm not modding it. I haven't modded it, and I don't think I will. I have to be honest with you. Um, I'll probably mod it at some point, uh, but only when I've like, got my fill of it in its current uh, form. Sorry for disappearing, by the way. It started pissing down. I left the bedroom window up. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Uh, Valve versus ID. Sorry, this is my own headline writing. It's terrible. Um, so Valve have been talking about paying people to mod games for a while, but ID have chimed in. Um, John Carmack specifically has chimed in to say that ID were going to do this years ago uh, with Quake, but they didn't have the uh, and they were going to call it QuakeNet, um, and it was going to they were going to pay people to make quake mods make quake maps things like that but they didn't have the time or the resources to implement it back then i think basically they're just agreeing with each other but idea kind of going oh you thought of it first yeah essentially it's a bit of sticker it's a case of like yeah you thought of it first but you didn't do it so yeah. you've got nothing to say yeah. like i can think of a i can i can think of a fucking laser ride dog detector but it, I haven't made it so it doesn't mean anything does it it's just a thought it's an idea that's a useless invention anyway but what yeah is? saying they thought of it first doesn't really mean anything does it I thought of the spoon before it got invented yeah really mm -hmm. Michelangelo thought of a helicopter but it, it didn't make one and it didn't work so you know not Michelangelo oh, sorry Leonardo Leonardo, Leonardo Leonardo da Vinci sorry, that was a helicopter that was a hovering sex machine <laughs> hovering sex machine. It's specifically used for sex. You can't hover and do anything else in it. No, that's that's its only function. Hovers about a foot off the ground and just makes you just twist your body like the force. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was truly a genius, that man. Yes, oh. way ahead of his time. It's only just now we're starting to get. Um, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, you're going I'm too far into this now. I'm announcing for online sex devices. <laughs> Helicopter blood sex I'll devices. I'll probably be scarred by fuckingmachines.com. <laughs> right, there's a new gamer platform that's been out for a while um, called Curse, which I only, I've only just heard about today. Uh, that now yeah. has 2.3 million users, and it's, it's like a Skype type thing. Um, I think they're just, again... It's kind of a press release to try and get some more people involved. Uh, however, it doesn't do video chat. So I'm I'm currently in the process of looking for another platform than Skype for us to do these, these calls because I fucking hate Skype. And it's getting worse and worse. Every upgrade is getting slower and slower. The the ads are getting more intrusive and uh, things are crashing more often. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to move away from it. There was also another one called Tox that I was looking at. Uh, which is like a Tor, if you if you know what Tor is, the browser, um, and it's like an anonymous kind of usage Skype, essentially this Tox. So I'm going to have a look at that at some point, not because it's anonymous, because it might work better than Skype, basically. Yeah, so the uh, one of the main benefits of Tor is that it is actually quite quick. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I want. I want. I don't like bloat. Skype didn't used to be bloat, but it's becoming very bloated now. Um, mm. But yeah. It is what it is. So I'm just going to paste that into chat for people. If you're interested in an alternative to Skype for for gaming stuff, to be fair, uh, the the main the main uh, push for this curse thing is that you can essentially create a list of gamer friends that you've made in certain games, and it's compatible with certain games. So say you go into COD and you make some friends, you can then take them over into the next uh, into into your next game, or you can find them in the other games that you play. I don't know how it works exactly. It sounds like Steam to me, <laughs> to be fair, because that's basically what Steam allows you to do. You've got a list of friends, and I think the, con the I think your uh, and the console networks provide that as well. You grind a cons if you make a friend on the Xbox Live or the PSN, you can find them again in another game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, sure. it's social social Pretty platforms soon. are the, a big thing, though, aren't they these days? And if you don't have one, or you don't, I mean, there's that um, a nuke thing that we were talking about a few weeks ago as well. That's uh, I I've been on a few times and it, it it seems pretty cool. It's just that I don't bloody have the time for it. I have to be honest with you at the moment. Um, I do think that anything, well, anything the curse is just not really the best name choice in the world. But no, anyway. The movie say curse you, 
curse. Well, it is a voice platform, yeah. so yeah, maybe it's all about swearing. Maybe that's what they're trying to encourage gamers to do. Be more exploitative. Expletative, sorry. Not more effort and jeffing, please. Right. Uh, Mayweather and Pac... I don't even know what, how to say his name. Pacquio? Pacquio. Pacquio. Pacquio? Um, the, 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 it's a bit of a, a quick YouTube video. It's uh, just a, a bit of a funny one. Um, it's the Mayweather and Pacquiao fight, the fight in that happened punch in out style, as in Nez punch out style. And I, I watched it. I didn't watch the fight, but I did watch the, the punch out fight. And I think it summarizes it that Mayweather is a doesn't like getting hit. <laughs> I think that was basically yeah. it. He does a lot of dodging and uh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's more about the money than he is the entertainment. But yeah, I well, don't how care about he boxing. Get, he, got, so. he pocketed 150 million, I think, for that fight. It's not ridiculous like that. Yeah, like his paycheck for that fight was was. It's like you don't need to you don't need to do anything else, mate. After that, you've got that much money. You're done, sorted. Why would you even bother getting in the ring Imagine when you could get your face smashed in? Imagine the yeah, tax. Probably. Uh, oh, my heart bleeds for him. You know, the tax. The tax or oh. seventy five million tax or something. Probably. Anyway, um these are all quick ones to be fair, the the, the last few. Console backward compatibility truths revealed. A good article on GameSpot about why uh, console backward compatibility does not exist really these days and that the Wii is the only modern ish platform that has any kind of realistic console uh, backward compatibility. The That's Wii U not really does it. backwards compatibility though, is it? Uh, well, read the article. It goes Software into emulated detail. backwards compatibility. I don't know. Which uh, it is um, when you when you put an original Wii game in the Wii U, it actually resets itself and boots back up again with no, a no, different the Wii, OS. Not the Wii U, the Wii. Oh, sorry. So that that may well be software compat. I said it's the, the the most modern one is the Wii that has any kind of meaningful backward compatibility. But the I don't know about the Wii U. I didn't even know the Wii U had any kind of backward compatibility. Because at least Nintendo is still supporting that kind of thing. Mm. Whereas all mm. the other console platforms have just stopped doing it. Now I didn't. It's a huge article that I've just pasted in chat. So if you're interested in that kind That's of it. thing, then do read it. But I I haven't read it. All. I mean. My initial response to that is is because um, since obviously the the PS3 has moved away from the Emotion Engine has moved on to uh, is it Intel or AMD? It's an x86 or x64 based chipset anyway, and so is uh, the Xbox 360. That was a Power PC chip, I think, in the 360, and that's now an Intel. Um, so the two aren't compatible. Right. So it's so it, it's like trying to play an OS X game on your PC. Yeah, this yeah. wouldn't work. You could emulate it software, but then you'd need a really beefy machine to emulate it. Mm. Which I don't think the Xbox One or the PS4 has got enough grunt to be able to software emulate the predecessors. I mean, a, a high-end PC can't emulate a PS3. No, it's in fact, we, we struggle to emulate quite a lot of things on PCs and... Yeah. I said I don't I don't fully understand it but it was one of them articles I saw I'm going to have a read of properly cuz I'm interested in it at least and I didn't I didn't have time to. What's this last article then who's put this in? I put that in there just cuz I was just looking up gaming news and it came up on a Google <laughs> search and it was just kind of funny. Um, it's it, funny but also not funny at all. It, yeah, it's kind of when you look at I've seen the URL there failed Christian shoe promoter makes yeah. anti gear first person shooter. Yeah, it's just it's just a recipe for comedy. Um, it's just kind of one of those things. Trying to like, to kill. It's, it's called kind of, it, kill what the made faggot. Me laugh about it is, yeah, the game is called kill <laughs> the, the faggot. The game is called that is horrific. And then apparently the the developers since said, oh, it was meant to be um, like a joke and satirical, but it, it isn't really. It's just it just it managed to sneak through um, their process because there's is it you have to get a hundred dollar. Uh, buy in to get your game published on that the green light platform or whatever it is on Steam. I don't use Steam that much, so you'd have to tell us exactly how that works. But um, I just thought it was a funny little thing, and the the sound of the game just sounds really ridiculously offensive and stupid. But it's, it was interesting with the the amount of shit that was going on about that game hatred. Hmm. Um, just this one was released and was just that have this uh, incredibly inappropriate and offensive game 
with no big fanfare and, or and controversy surrounding it. Also, it's been removed now anyway. Also, no effort whatsoever put into the game. It was just, it looks no. like it is literally just a a hate crime <laughs> in digital form, I have to be honest <laughs> with you. It yeah, actually basically. looks like uh, the same engine that was used on uh, uh, their Die Hard trilogy for the PlayStation. <laughs> it's possible. That, I think a lot of these, these kind of games use the shared assets, don't they? And they're just going to you can just shit them out if you want to. A lot of them. It's quite a lot. Quite a lot of indie games have been like that, haven't they? Yeah. Not that. Not as offensive as that, but with that the sort of low production quality and the low effort put into it. Yeah. That's just a little bit of daft shit. <laughs> now I'm reading yeah, the article. It's Sorry, it's, I'm fascinated by what these people have to say for themselves. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. So, I think we've reached the end of the show. In record time as well. It's because Lou's not I might, I might try and play a new game before next week. You, you try. <laughs> you try that. <laughs> have, you, have you got that, any pending or you, uh, have you got any was that on one, There Was that one that Lou, that Lou mentioned, I think, is out now? Um, something... Oh, what was it? It was something Titan, wasn't it? Um, oh, Titan. That's all where it, yeah, that one. Uh, uh, that... I might have a go at that. I think that's out now, so that might. Be I have that downloaded, but I haven't played it yet. Yeah, it looks you... like my kind of game. When did you get it? Uh, last week after the show. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I might get that and have a have a bash. But there's sure nothing like, else. Um, on the... There's nothing on the Another game that I'm going to get. I've just randomly stumbled across Road Redemption. It looks like a modern remake of Road Rash. Oh, I've heard oh. of that. I've heard of that road reduction. Is, that, is, it with, is it 3D graphics and all that, lot? Yeah, you ran across the top of buildings or down motorways. Uh, was it published by? Was it the developer? Galaxy Interactive, the Fish Brothers, oh. Pixel Dash Duke. I'd be up for a modern version of that. Road Rush. My looks, shoot, be quite cool. repetitive. Road Rush was quite a repetitive game after a while, but it was quite good fun just smacking the shit out of people on motorbikes. <laughs> I didn't have it back in the day. I've got it now. I've got it on Mega Drive downstairs, but um, one of my friends had it, I had, so I used to uh, play it. Is. I had Road Rash 2, and I completed it and got all the best motorbikes and stuff on it. Yeah, it's good. Mm, it's procedurally say. generated as well. It's a procedurally generated police just come and twat you like five of them at once. <laughs> yeah. That'll be fun, I'm sure. Well, let us put a close to the show. Thank you very much for everybody in chat. Thank you everybody for watching. We have been Residence Arcade. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, on our website. Everything is forward slash Residence Arcade or www.residencearcade.com. Um, we're still trying to finish off Metal Gear Solid 3. I keep working Monday night, so... You keep unless bastard we... working all the bastard time, don't you, you bastard unless bastard? We, unless, we just do a, unless we just do a pre-record one night and then let's, just put it up. Later. Let's do that. Let's just get it done, because I want to finish it off. And even if we never play a four, just get it done. <laughs> yeah. Because I wouldn't yeah. mind starting some other, other streams, because Lou keeps threatening that he's going to do something, but he's too busy with his pretend life at the moment, so... Let's uh, let's get on some other games and do some do some other things. We've got some co-op stuff. Surely, surely we can record some GTA Five when we do that as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you should do. Should be full of fun. Right. So yes, thank you very much, everybody. We shall catch you next week, hopefully. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.